responsive pages are essential to make sure your designs look and perform seamlessly on any device, from desktops to smartphones. Today, I will show you the most effective way to achieve responsive layouts in Figma, using a tool called Constraints. Hi, I'm Lari from Brazil, and let's dive in. Basically, constraints in Figma define how elements adjust when you resize their frames. So the first thing you have to know about this tool is that it's not going to work without frames. So if you're building a page with groups, for example, the tool is not going to work. So this is the first important thing to remember before you start to create your page in Figma. Use frames. So let's see how this tool works in practice. For this, I'm going to create a frame right here, okay? And we're going to call this frame the parent frame. I'm going to create an element which is going to be the child element inside of this frame. So it could be any shape here or image or even a frame, but I'm going to select a rectangle and create right here. So we can see for default in Figma that this element is aligned to the top and the left side of this frame, this parent frame, because if we resize this, we see that this element is not going to move, it's not going to change, it is going to stay right there, because it's aligned to the top and the left side of the frame. We can see this because there is two blue lines here. So there is a line here and there is a line here. It says that this element is aligned to the top and to the left side. What if we want to change this alignment, th these restrictions? What if we wanted this rectangle to be aligned to the right side of the frame, for example? So to change these restrictions, we have to use the constraints tool. So we're going to select the rectangle and we're going to go right here in this icon. If in your Figma is not showing this menu, it's because you have to click on this icon to this menu appears, okay? So right here is where we're going to just change these restrictions. So we can see that this element is aligned to the left and the top of the frame. We can see here on this area too. This line on the top and this line on the left is blue. So it says that this element is aligned to the top and left, okay? So here we can change. We have these two options. We can change here on this area by clicking on the other lines here to change this alignment, or we can change right here. This first menu is the horizontal constraint. So if we want this to change left, right, or left and right, or scale in the horizontal, we can change right here, okay? And the second menu is the vertical constraint. So if we want top, bottom, top and bottom, scale, we can change right here, okay? So you can choose whatever you want to change here on this area, or here is going to make the same thing. So Let's change the restrictions to right side of the frame. Let's make the alignment of this element to the right side of the frame. We can just click here on this line and look what happened. This line here changed to right here, to the right side of the frame. So now this element is aligned to this side of the frame. So if we resize this frame, what happened? This element is moving because it's going to maintain the distance of the element and the edge, the right edge of the frame, and the element and the top edge of the frame. Okay, so basically, is this we change these restrictions right here, and we have two options here that can be a little confusing. We have these options left and the, this option left and right, and the option scale. So let's see the difference between these two options. So for this, I'm going to just change this frame. I'm going to let this element center. And I'm going to duplicate this frame. And in the first frame, I'm going to apply the left and right option. 
and in the second I'm going to apply the scale. So look what happened. In the first option we have the blue lines in the right side of the frame and in the left side of the frame. In the second it, it doesn't even appear this blue line. So let's resize these two frames to see what happened. And look what happened here. So we can see here in the first option that this space between the edge and the element, this margin on the left and the right side, it's the same as before. So this option left and right is going to change the widget of the object, but the distance here, the margins are going to stay the same. And the second option, which is scale, what happened? everything scales to. So not just the widget of this element changed, but the space between the margins here scaled to. So this is the difference between these two options and it's the same difference to top bottom and scale. Okay, top bottom is going to maintain the distance be between the element and the top edge of the frame and in the bottom too. And scale is going to scale everything, even the spaces, okay, the margins in the top and the bottom of the frame. So basically, this is how constraints works in Figma. But how do we use this tool to transform a normal page into a responsive page? For this, I'm going to uh, make like a wireframe here. So imagine this is a menu, okay. And probably we're going to have a logo here and very simple just to explain here to you guys. And we're going to have a button here, probably some menu options here. And this is going to be the center of the page. This is going to be aligned to the right side and the logo is going to be aligned to the left side, right? And our responsive page should adapt as we resize the widget of the frame, right? So if I resize this, nothing is going to happen. We have to use the constraints tool. So for the logo, it's okay because it's going to stay aligned to the left and the top. But this element, this button has to be aligned to the right side of the frame and the top. So I have to change here on constraints to right side of the frame. And this three elements are going to be center, but aligned to the top as well. So I'm going to change left to center. So look what is going to happen if I resize this frame. This page is responsive because if I resize the frame, this logo is going to stay right there. This button is going to stay right there and these three options are going to stay right there too. So this is the power of constraints. So now let's practice in a real example. So I have a simple page here in Figma and we were going to use constraints to transform this page on a responsive page. Okay, so we have a bigger frame here called desktop and we have the menu frame, then the section one frame and then the section two frame. Okay, so let's start with this frame. So we're going to put some restrictions for these three, three elements here. Okay, this one, this one, and this one in relation to the parent frame, in relation to the menu frame. So let's start. I'm going to select, select first here the logo. And I want this logo to be aligned on the left side of the menu frame, but I want it to be on the center, okay? Because if I resized the height here, I want this to be on the center. So it's going to be aligned to the left and center here on the constraints. Okay, ready? Let's go to the next element. These three buttons here, I use auto layout for this three. And for this, I want them to be aligned to the center. Okay, so I'm going to put center and center. And the button here, I want it to be on the center too but aligned to the right side of the frame. So the menu is done, let's go to the next section. So for this section, I have the bigger section here, section one, and I have another section to 
which I used auto layout. Okay, so it's already responsive here. But I want this to be responsive in the whole page. So I need to set the constraints of this frame in relation to the bigger frame, to the frame section one. Because if I resize this, look, it's not responsive. So I'm going to select this. And for this, I'm going to let in the center of the section, but in relation to the horizontal constraints, I want this margin to be always the same. So I'm going to put left and right, okay? So if I resize this, look what is happening, okay? It is responsive. And for the, the second section, I'm going to do the same. So center and left and right. So now what happened if we resize the bigger frame? Let's see. Okay, it's not responsive, right? Because we set the constraints for the elements inside of each frame inside of the bigger frame. So we have to now set the constraints for these three frames, okay? So we're going to select these three frames here. And here in left, we're going to change for scale. And we can change here the on the vertical to scale 2, okay? So when I change, resize the widget, the page is responsive. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments.